Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. Um, this is a this is gonna be an incremental progress thing. It's gonna be setting up things in the future. Things, more things. Uh, first we gotta feed our animals, and I like to include this footage because you know uh, having animals is a milestone in the first place. So I, I like to uh, celebrate this fact by uh, including the boring, tedious tasks because they are valid too. Um, but then we're gonna go out and try to actually accomplish some things uh, Things sorry, uh, but first we have to include our of course uh, almost uh, Ceremonial uh, event of me dying to wolves because of course we do and, uh, and Then I'm looking for resin. So we're gonna be doing like three or four things. Sorry. I, I just it's in my head now uh, repeatedly for the next three or so episodes, uh, I'm gonna be collecting resin. So you're gonna see me in this forest, and oh my god, a bear! Oh my god, a bear! Um, you're gonna be seeing me seeing me in this forest, uh, looking around for resin. And thank goodness there is quite a lot of it in there. Uh, and I like to mark them on my map so that uh, after a few days have passed, I can come and recollect from the same tree. Every time I find a tree, mark it on my map. It's a good practice. Uh, I should really get um, hotkeys set up so that I don't have to like type things out and it's a lot easier, but uh, you know, whatever, I'm lazy. So I haven't done that yet. Uh, so resin is our first thing. Next thing is your, well, you're gonna see me crafting some stuff. Today we're making a transmission. Uh, and I want it to uh, inevitably have two transmissions and of course that means also two clutches you there's no point in having a transmission if you don't have a clutch as well otherwise the transmission does nothing but uh, I'm just kind of setting up this area we're getting things kind of organized uh, arranged for a potentially having automated smithing which is something I'm very excited for uh, it's sort of the culmination of everything I've been working towards uh, I'm planning out which kind of materials I need to make things out of. I don't really know uh, how best to set this up. I, like, I don't know like what kind of anvil I should be upgrading to. Uh, I've heard that maybe having an iron anvil is better, but I'm not, I don't know about that. So maybe if you do know about that, you could point me to the, in the right direction in terms of a resource. I have tried to wiki this and I have tried to like just look things up, but uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit to, uh, out of grasp, but uh, I checked up on one of my old mines for some coal This is one of those situations where it's like I need to make a tool in order to continue Progressing on my thing, but I can't make a tool because I have run out of coal. I don't want to make um, You know, whatever you call it charcoal because that takes too much time So I want to just go and mine some coal So I did and I mined quite a lot of it uh, two stacks of it is enough to not have to worry about coal for quite a long time and of course we're collecting more resin. So <clears throat> two, two things, <laughs> collecting resin. And eventually uh, in this episode, we're making arrows. The reason we're making arrows is because I'm gonna have to be doing a lot of hunting. A lot of the things that we still need uh, in order to have automated smithing is uh, animal fat. And of course we need resin. And of course we need other bits and bobs, but we'll worry about those later. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, just like animal fat and resin. So I need a bunch of arrows and arrows are a huge pain in the butt to make, I have to say. Uh, I, I've come to, uh, you know, figure out how to make them. Like I, I have a sort of a method, but uh, this, you know, like I don't like to be too methodical about this, these things because then they become chores. So I just like to wing it, I guess. But I just make a, like a little bridge uh, to each arrowhead and then... Uh, carry over some of the extra little voxel bits and that works out pretty well <clears throat> so with our arrows uh made and I, I forget what i'm also making here can't remember it'll be a surprise to me as well but uh i've got to do some leather tanning i leather tanning has become a weird contentious thing for me because i'm including footage on uh, of it but it really is just a chore i'm kind of maintaining on the sideline i don't have a plan i don't have a goal in mind i just want more leather and uh yeah i don't know why uh it, it seems to be something i just do uh as part of my 
regular tasks so that's fine i I'm, i love the background construction that wasn't there like literally before i started recording the video so there you go uh love love that for me so what are we making i don't know let's see what is it oh more arrows <laughs> yeah we're making a lot of arrows today and that makes sense because i am not good at um like re-picking up all of my arrows it's not out of lack of want it's uh i just lose them like if i like shoot a couple of arrows at a wolf and die it's extra hard to find out where my arrows were uh if i shoot at an animal and have to chase it down uh that you know it makes it more difficult to find my arrows but <clears throat> you know for the most part I try my best to reclaim the arrows. They also have a, I think, a 25% chance of breaking whenever you shoot an animal. So uh, there, there is just a built-in kind of uh, breakage uh, for, for arrows. So uh, that, that's probably also happening. But it does lend a little bit of doubt in my mind because I'm like, well, did, did I lose the arrow or uh, did it break? So uh, maybe it, it's discourages me from looking for the rest of the arrows but i'm pretty sure i did look for all of the arrows in all of this footage you're going to be seeing this a lot in the next couple episodes i hope that's okay but uh just like me going around killing the wildlife in the area and i feel bad almost every time especially if i see that like these well, rams are like a family if there's like a you know a, a mama and a papa and two two little babies and oh my gosh they're so cute yeah well except i'm sorry but my windmill is built on the the pile of bones uh, of you know the local fauna and uh that that's just the way things are i suppose nothing industry doesn't come without sacrifice i suppose uh so yeah i mean it always comes back to that doesn't it so uh, I'm going to be pickling as much of the meat as I find and then uh, I will be cooking. It, it's a weird thing because like on one hand I'm pickling like half the meat and then the other half I'm cooking in stews and then also preserving those soups. So most of the food I'm finding right now I'm going are going towards preservation. But uh, I'm not sure if that's you know what I should be actually doing. But anyway, after all of that uh, animal fat and resin we have our transmission and our clutch and check that out it it isn't working because i don't have an angled gear on the side there uh now we do and now it, it is working check that out isn't that isn't that lovely i love the look of that honestly the the way automation works in vintage story makes me very happy it actually looks really cool and it makes sense it has a logic to it um it, it might not be like one-to-one -to, -one to reality but it's good enough and i i i think it does a lot to add something to this world i wanted to put a sign here but i realize you can't draw on the signs with brown coal which i think it's just silly um so i wanted to write down what i needed to accomplish next which i can't remember what i wanted to do next but you know we're getting there we're getting to something interesting i hope you've enjoyed this if you had uh hit that like button consider subscribing for more content like this i'll see you guys next time take it easy